You have your rifle and your scope, but the question remains, how do I mount my scope onto my rifle? There are several ways to accomplish this, but the better the job that you do, the better your accuracy will be. The first step is to find the right mounts for your gun. One way is to mount a Picatinny rail on your rifle. This is a slotted rail that attaches to the tapped holes on the top of your gun. The more attachment points that you add, the more potential points of failure you add to the system. That means by attaching a Picatinny rail and then adding rings to the rail, you double the places where the screws can come loose and cause the scope to move off of its zero. The failure points with a Picatinny rail are the screws that hold the rail in place, the screws that hold the scope in the rings, and the screws or bolts that attach to the rail. Rails can be a single piece or two pieces and may be cut to allow better access to the chamber or cover the entire top of the chamber. The upside to a Picatinny rail is that it will be much easier to find rings to hold the scope. The other option is to find the right rings that will screw directly to the receiver of your gun. This eliminates the ring to base failure point, but the screws that attach the rings to the receiver and the screws that lock the scope into the ring still remain. These tally mounts attach directly to the receiver and hold the scope in place. This loophole Picatinny rail mounts to the gun and then the rings mount to the rail and hold the scope in place. Bases and mounts will be specific to your make and model of gun and also to the length of your action. The biggest risk of failure is not tightening the screws enough so that the recoil of firing the rifle causes the screws to loosen up over time and the scope will float. You can tell this is the case if your rifle is grouping well and then begins to have an erratic point of impact shift, where the bullet hits doesn't correspond to adjustments you make on the scope. The culprit is usually some loose screws on the rings or on the rail. Once you've decided which mounting system you will use, you need to choose the correct rings. You need to either get ring mounts that match your make and model or that attach to a standard Picatinny or Weaver rail. A Picatinny rail has squared notches and a Weaver rail has rounded notches. Once you've determined how you will mount, you need to find rings that have two crucial measurements. The first is ring diameter. This will be determined by the diameter of the scope that you will be mounting. Thinner scopes tend to be one inch. More standard scopes are usually 30 millimeter. Some higher end scopes may be as large as 34 to 36 millimeter. Your scope manufacturer will tell you the tube size of your scope in their specifications. The second is the scope height. This is a bit more subjective. Factors such as minutes of angle of adjustment come into play as well as the ranges that you expect to shoot at. You may also need to choose your ring height based on the bell end or objective lens size and the taper of your barrel. A larger objective lens with a less drastic barrel taper can force you to use a taller ring to clear the objective bezel over the barrel. If you're going to shoot at targets that are closer, you can go with lower rings as long as the scope clears the bezel. For farther distance shooting, you may need to raise the scope to add more elevation than the scope has adjustment in the elevation dial. For this setup, we're mounting a loophole Picatinny rail to the receiver and adding high 34mm rings for the larger 52mm objective lens. Since we're shooting a 300 Win Mag and setting this up for long range shooting, the higher rings are a good choice for this application. It also allows me to get a better cheek weld with good eye relief on this particular rifle and scope. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that your gun is unloaded. I like to remove the bolt as an added precaution. Then make sure everything is nice and clean and oil free. I use a bit of acetone on a rag to wipe down the mounting surfaces. Then I like to add a little bit of blue thread locker compound to my threads. This not only helps prevent the screws from walking out from recoil, but it also helps to act as a buffer between the screws and the gun, slightly lessening the shock on them. There's some debate on how much of a difference this makes overall, but most experts agree that even if there is no recoil mitigation, there is certainly no negative effect from adding the thread locker. Many manufacturers will pre-apply thread locker to the screws for you. When mounting the rail or ring mounts, there's often a front and a back. One side may be flat and the other rounded. Make sure that you line them up correctly. First, remove any thread plugs that may be in place on the receiver. In the case of this Weatherby meat eater, they're just little plastic plugs and a 90 degree pick is perfect for lifting them out of their holes.
Your gun may have tiny metal screws and a small gunsmithing screwdriver will unscrew them. Always make sure that you are using a hollow ground gunsmithing screwdriver as these get to the bottom of the slot better than a standard tapered screwdriver will. Using the wrong screwdriver can slip and damage your gun or mounts. Next, set your rail or ring mounts on top of the gun and apply a small amount of thread locker. A toothpick is great for this. I like to set the screws just barely tight at this stage so that I can make even adjustments later. I work in a clockwise direction, applying about half a turn of force to each screw and repeat this until all of the screws are just tight. I like to set the screws just barely tight at this stage so that I can make even adjustments later. Once all the screws are started, I work in a clockwise direction, applying about a half turn of force to each screw, and repeat this until all of the screws are tight. At this point, I usually use a torque wrench to make sure all of the screws are tightened to the proper amount of torque. Your mount should tell you the proper amount of torque to apply, or you can use the gauge on the torque wrench for your diameter of screw. Next, I screw the rings onto the rail. Many of these rail mounted rings will use a five-sided bolt. They often have a slot in the middle that will accept a screwdriver, but I prefer to use a socket. If you use a socket, it's very easy to over torque your bolt and damage the rail, the rings, or the bolt, and you can even snap the bolt off. Use a torque wrench to set the proper amount of torque. You want it tight enough that it won't come loose, but not so tight that things break. As I'm putting the rings on the Picatinny rail, I'm finding my cheek weld position and setting the scope in the half rings to make sure that I have good eye relief while getting the rings flat against the main part of the scope tube and not positioned on the sloping bezels. If you are using ring mounts, you may need to flip them around so that the part of the base that extends beyond the ring faces either toward you or away from you, depending on which way fits better. Once the mounts are secure, you need to open the rings. On these loophole rings, you simply remove four screws on each ring and lift off the top. Some rings have screws on the sides that split the ring in half vertically, and these screws not only hold the scope, but also apply tension to hold the ring on the rail. They may also have a horizontal metal piece that has to be inserted to slip into the slots on the rail. Make sure not to lose this piece as it prevents the ring from sliding forward and backwards on the rail. Once I have the best position where I can look through the scope and see the image clearly all the way to the edges without much in the way of black space around the reticle and target, then I gently set the top of the rings in place and place two of the screws in position diagonally from each other. Tighten these just enough to hold the scope in position, but not so tight that I cannot turn the scope in the rings. Once I'm certain that the scope won't slide forward and back in the scope, I stop tightening. Now it's time to get level. You can use a good solid vise to hold your gun in position like this best gun vise from Tipton. I really like this vise as it allows me to make a bunch of various adjustments to help me level the gun. I can raise or lower the rear stock while supporting the front end to get the rifle level and then lock it into place. 
Once the gun is level, forward and backward, and side to side, then I want to lock it into place. One option is to use this Wheeler Scope Level 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 Kit to level the rifle and the scope. Leveling makes sure that you properly align the crosshairs. Improperly rotated crosshairs can shift your point of aim, point of impact, and also make zeroing and adjusting your scope very frustrating and imprecise. By getting your gun level and then checking the level on your scope by leveling the top adjustment turret, you can make sure that your adjustments do what you want them to do. You can also hang a plumb line just past the end of the muzzle to give you a straight vertical point to align your reticle on. Just make sure that the rifle and the table are as level as well. Once the scope is set in the proper position and leveled and aligned, you can begin to tighten the screws on the ring, taking care not to bump the scope out of position. I start on the side away from me and work in a clockwise fashion, first with the top rear, then the top front, bottom front, bottom rear, with just a half turn each time. Once these are fairly tight, I'll add in the other screws, repeating this clockwise rotation until all of the screws are tight, and then I will apply the recommended torque using the torque wrench. This incremental approach will prevent the screws from twisting the scope up or down or left or right and prevent damage to the scope housing and the delicate precision internals. Though it sounds complicated, mounting your scope is not that difficult. It's also not the end of the world if you mess up the alignment. You simply remove the screws and start over again. It's unlikely that the entire process will take you more than 20 to 30 minutes. If you're watching this and thinking that maybe it's a bit more than you're wanting to bite off, don't be discouraged. Simply bring your rifle and scope to your local Sportsman's Warehouse store and let one of our knowledgeable hunting associates do it for you. Sportsman's Warehouse carries a wide assortment of bases, rings, and mounts, as well as some of the best optics on the market. Let us help you get mounted. Once you're mounted, it's time to sight in and zero your rifle, but that is another video for another day. Have fun, be safe, and shoot straight.